Peter Parker is a normal teenager who attends a high school in New York City. He doesn't have a lot of friends and many see him as rather nerdy. One day, however, everything changed when he attended a science exhibition. During the demonstration of a particle accelerator, the young man felt a sharp stab in his hands. When he looked down, he saw that he had been bitten by a spider. Initially, he didn't think too much of it. Well, just a spider bite, right? Well, wrong. After a few hours, he experienced fever and fatigue. Instead of going to the hospital, the teenager decided to rest and see whether his symptoms persist. When he woke up, he surprisingly felt much better, but also different. He gained incredible strength, agility and could even climb walls. We all know that the story of Spider-Man is pure fiction. Or is it? Are there any real phenomena in biology which can explain Spider-Man? My name is Kim Steinek and today we'll talk about the science of Spider-Man. <music> This video is based on the original Spider-Man comics and movies. To explain Spider-Man's superpowers, we first have to understand what happened inside Peter Parker's body when he was bitten. In the original comics, the spider which bit the teenager was radioactive as it was hit by a beam coming from a particle accelerator. During the attack, the spider released toxins together with radioactive particles into the bloodstream of the boy. Since radiation has extreme high levels of energy, they can penetrate cells. This can then directly break the genetic information or DNA of Peter Parker's cells. That of course is bad, but cells recognize that DNA has been broken and try to reconnect the pieces. This sometimes works but often does not and that leads to mutations or permanent changes in the DNA sequence. This also explains why Peter Parker experienced symptoms shortly after the incidents. He might have suffered from radiation sickness which is characterized by a variety of symptoms such as fatigue, vomiting or fever. In mild cases, radiation sickness can vanish after a couple of hours and does not lead to any permanent damages. Can we acquire the abilities of spider through radioactive particles though? Well, no, sorry, Peter. Radiation alone can give us mutations, but no spider DNA. The main issue here is that radioactivity can change our DNA, but there is no reason why it should give us the abilities of spiders. So yeah, no radioactivity for us. But there is a solution for that. What if the spider didn't transform Peter Parker into Spider-Man because it was radioactive? In the Spider-Man movies, Peter Parker doesn't get bitten in a science fair. Instead, he just casually walks into a lab with awful safety measurements. I mean, come on, what is that? A room full of spiders where everyone just walks in? Since these spiders were bred in the laboratory, there's a great chance that they have been genetically modified. And that is the solution. Genetic engineering is a process where we use DNA to alter the genetic information of an organism. So that means that we have tools to add or delete genes from an organism and see what happens. One of the major ways to do that is by using engineered retroviruses. These are not real viruses anymore, but they contain genetic information from parts of viruses. In principle it works like this. We insert DNA, for example a gene, into the engineered retrovirus. Then the retrovirus infects the cells of an organism we want to study. Retroviruses have the ability to integrate their DNA into the DNA of the host cell and that means that it can also integrate the gene we want to deliver. This technology is normally well established and we have several safety mechanisms which prevent the virus from spreading. But engineered retroviruses are not really established to modify spiders. What if Oscop Corporation illegally started to genetically alter spiders to make them produce more silk? Was it an inside job all along? I call for Spidergate 2021. What happened really here? Well, whatever happens, let's assume that the spiders contain an active and dangerous form of a retrovirus. If these viruses now gain the ability to infect other species, then we are in trouble. And that actually could make sense. In the past, retroviruses have been able to infect different species over and over again. A study a couple of years ago analyzed the genetic information of three mammalian species. It was found that hints of the same virus was present in the DNA of all three animals. We also shouldn't forget HIV which was transmitted from monkeys to humans. But it can even get more extreme. WO is a virus which normally infects bacteria but also contains spider DNA. In this case the virus primarily lives in bacteria but sometimes end up in spider cells where it steals some DNA and gets back. So in our scenario, it is definitely possible that a poorly handled retrovirus might get the ability to infect other species. When Peter Parker was bitten by the spider, it could have released retroviruses into his bloodstream. 
Since these retroviruses have lived in spiders for quite some time, they might also have taken up some spider DNA. The viral particles then attached, entered cells and started to mess with Peter Parker's DNA. We could also try to explain Peter Parker's fatigue and fever shortly after the bite as his immune system might have recognized the intruders. Now however, we might come to a dead end. It is highly unlikely and nearly impossible for a virus to infect all the billions of cells of a human within a couple of hours. So it would be a bit more realistic if the retrovirus only infects special types of cells or if it causes a chronic infection where it propagates and slowly takes over. Alternatively, Peter Parker might decide to get bitten by spiders over and over again to keep the number of viruses in his blood high. Let's assume though that the retrovirus in fact was able to take over and infect most of Peter Parker's body. What now? How can we explain their superpowers? Super power review. Alright, let's start with the spidey sense. Peter Parker's spidey sense is able to detect small changes in the environment. This is especially useful when he is in a fight. As soon as the other person initiates a punch, Peter Parker knows where the punch is coming from and blocks it. And this might be possible if Peter Parker's skin was infected by the retrovirus. In this scenario, the virus brought spider genes to hair follicle stem cells. These stem cells are very important as they continuously produce hair on our skin. By adding certain spider genes though, we might not make normal hair, but instead produce antenna-like hairs of spiders. Similar to our hair, these antenna-like hair might also be connected to nerve cells which send signals to the brain. And since these hair are so sensitive, they might bend very easily and then send a signal to the brain when we have the tiniest change in the environment. Although no scientific study has tried it so far, a couple of years ago a suit has been developed to mimic the spidey sense. Here microphone equipped modules were combined with tiny robotic arms. The suit constantly sends out ultrasound signals which are reflected by the environment and then analyzed by the suit. If someone moves towards us, the ultrasound signal will be recorded quicker by the suit. That then triggers tiny robotic arms in the suit which pinch us. So yeah Peter, point for you. So my personal rating for this superpower, 6 out of 10. Cool concept, no biological studies, cool suit. Now we come to Spider-Man's strength. Spider-Man is known to be incredibly strong and can lift and throw all kinds of heavy objects. How could a retrovirus make us stronger or in other words how could it change our muscles? Muscles contain filaments which are surrounded by satellite cells. Satellite cells are normally not doing too much. If it work out however, they receive high levels of a molecule called HGF and start to make new cells. These cells then fuse with the muscle which makes us overall stronger. Let's assume that the retrovirus has infected Peter Parker's satellite cells. The virus could then initiate the production of HGF in satellite cells themselves, meaning that they produce more and more cells for muscle growth without having to work out. And indeed there are some scientific studies about this. Scientists have observed that giving HGF to mice which suffer from chronic muscle loss prevented the loss of muscles partially. But the virus could also do something else to give us greater apps. It could destroy a gene called MSTN. MSTN makes a protein which is important to tell muscles how big they should grow. If MSTN is destroyed, it causes myositin related muscle hypertrophy. Sounds dramatic, but affected individuals show no clinical symptoms, but they only have less body fat and more muscles. Yeah, there is a mutation which makes you jacked. There are also other great human mutations which give us some great abilities, we have covered them in this video if you're interested. So if the virus makes these changes, we might get some additional muscle power. But would it be enough to hold a cruise together or to lift an airplane? Well, no. Of course not, no, no. This superpower gets a 2 out of 10, there is some biology for making us stronger potentially, but it took me so many hours just to come up with this concept and I don't see any reason why the virus should make these particular changes. And last but not least we come to climbing walls. In a 2002 movie we saw that Spider-Man contains small hair which allow him to climb walls. That might sound awesome, but scientists actually try to disprove that this is possible. A scientific team in Cambridge concluded that the body of a human is physically too big to be able to climb walls. We need 40% of our total body surface to be covered in sticky footpads if we want to climb walls. So yeah, that means we need a lot of bigger hands and feet. 
But the story doesn't end here. In response to this publication, a research team in Stanford aimed to prove Cambridge wrong and presented a device called Gecko Gloss. These gloss contain synthetic adhesives with tiny polymers. And then they released a video where they really climb walls to prove the others wrong. So that's how diss tracks work in science. So yeah, climbing walls gets a 5 out of 10. It's biologically absolutely not possible, but we might have some special claws to do it. But for now, I hope that you enjoyed this video on the science of superpowers. If so, let me know in the comment section and also tell me which superpower I should cover next. Also subscribe if you're new here and hit the bell button. And with that, I'll see ya. We just talked about fiction superpowers, but some mutations can give us real superpowers. Click on this video to find out more. If you're interested in the fight against HIV and the development of an HIV vaccine, click on this video here.